up, everybody? Robbie Epic Sauce here, aka the Craft King. And today we're doing some parenting hacks, so uh, let's check some of these out. So here's how you can make fun little paw prints whenever you walk. First thing you're gonna need is a sponge. Draw a little paw print on it. Put a little bit of hot glue and glue it to a piece of cardboard. And then put some double-sided tape on that bad boy and step on it. And boom! It'll look like you're leaving little paw prints everywhere. It's like you're a wild animal. Plus, you'll know exactly where your kid goes. I guess that's also. Um, the main point, I suppose, but, uh, uh, anyway. Okay, guys, so here's our sponge. Now I'm gonna go ahead and draw a little paw. I even have room to do one on the other side. Now I'm gonna take my scissors and cut it out. I feel like I need to cut this sponge in half. Just because it's way too thick. This is actually a car sponge, believe it or not. There we go. That'll be easier. Ugh, now to carefully cut all these out. Okay, so now that we got these bad boys all done, we're gonna go ahead and grab them. Put them to the side, grab ourselves a box, and just take it apart. Cut it in half, and now we're gonna glue our sponge paws on. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and flip them over. Grab some double-sided tape, stick that right on there. I feel like I left a lot of extra up here, so I'm actually gonna cut it. Yeah, these turned out pretty good. Let's go try them out. A boobity boo. Now I'm going to carefully put them on my shoes. Looks good. Okay, now I'm going to gently dunk them in this little tin of water. Okay, you guys ready to see some animal paw prints? Oh! Oh! Guys, it's working! Oh! I lost one! Come on! No, come on! Get over here! Maybe I'll try it without my shoes. So here we go. You ready? Guys, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know how I feel about this one. Honestly, the paw print doesn't even come out. Oh, there's kinda one. You gotta do it really gently. Well guys, I guess I'm gonna have to say that this one uh, kinda works. You might need to use something else instead of uh, double-sided tape. But, I mean, if you can get it to stick to your feet, it's a fun little idea. guys, so for this one, I have my friend Luna here. And I thought she would be perfect for this one because she already has black and green hair. She's a perfect embodiment of a monster. By the way, guys, monster is my favorite energy drink, so do with that what, what you will. Anyway, do you want one? Yes. Uh, yes, and cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, yes, it reminds me of the Warp Tour. So I think the first thing that we're gonna do is give her some green clothes and green eyes. There we go, a perfect base. So the first thing I'm gonna do is try and replicate this logo onto her face. I'll start from the left and then make my way to the right. I'm sorry if my drawing skills are awful. I'm a crafter, not a drawer. Just so you know, I never claim to be good at drawing. You think the fact that I stare at this monster can every day, I'd really know how this thing is shaped. I think you're doing pretty good for not being a drawer guy. Thanks. Yeah. Perspectives are really weird. We got this, don't worry. Looks good so far. This one's a little crooked. <laughs> a warning would've been cool. Oh, sorry. And last one. Okay, now I'm gonna attempt to really fill this in. As someone who does makeup all the time, I'm sure you're gonna cringe how I do makeup. It's close, it's close. Maybe a little bit more. She had it more like over her whole nose. Now I have to go ahead and add the black outline to the monster logo and make it really pop. Okay guys, and this is how it turned out. What do you think, did I do a good job? I think it looks pretty similar. I think it looks really good. That's fantastic. So it looks like the one thing we're missing is some devil horns. Oh wait, we just take down your palm tree. I got this. <laughs> this is how all the cool kids are doing now. <laughs> wow. Wait, I did your hair the wrong way. Here, can you shake it? I do it like this. What if we use this to I'll let you put it off? That looks pretty good. It covered up a little bit of the monster logo, but this looks pretty fantastic in my opinion. Opinion. Okay, guys, we're gonna see what Tori Dobransky and our friend Ren think, okay? Come in, guys. <laughs> it's midnight, and I woke Tori Dobransky up from a dead sleep. Get in here, Tori Dobransky. Surprise. What do you guys think? God. Did I do a good job? No, uh, not, not too bad. You freehanded it. Oh my god. Wow. freehanded everything. That's wow. I was like, wow. That's amazing. I think this one, this little doodly do, whatever that is, is a little crooked towards the bottom. But okay. I think I did pretty good besides that. I think so too. Yeah. Really brings out the monster in you. <laughs> okay, guys, everyone ready for a monster crash? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good night, guys. Okay, so you go to put your little tyke to bed and uh, you try to remove their hair ties, but they just won't come off. Well, what you're gonna want to do is grab some lemon essential oils and just dab that stuff right on there. And it'll just break your rubber bands. Just remove them and you don't even have to wake them up. So I have this giant bag of rubber bands here and I'm gonna try and put my hair into Liberty Spikes. Will they technically be Liberty Spikes if I use rubber bands? I don't know. I'm gonna make my hair look really funny though. And you guys are about to embark on this journey with me. 
Okay, guys, what do you think? I personally think I kind of look like uh, Cynthia from Rugrats. And you know, this was fun in theory, but I'm really tired of this now. And I really don't want to yank these out because if I do... Ah! Okay, that one wasn't too bad. I thought I was gonna lose a lot more hair than that. So anyway guys, the craft calls for lemon essential oils, but I don't have any. So I'm gonna use this lemon juice instead. Yeah, that ought to work. Okay guys, let's try it. I'm gonna go ahead and just dab a little bit on this cotton swab. Oh yeah, just get it all over there. Theoretically, it will just break a rubber band. Come on. You can do it. Is it breaking? Come on, break. Do you really need lemon essential oil? What's the difference between the oil and the juice? I don't understand. Yeah, that's definitely not breaking. Well, guys, it looks like I'm gonna have to keep my hair like this for now. So I'm gonna have to say, with lemon juice, it absolutely doesn't work. Maybe if I actually had lemon essential oil. I'll try that next time. Can't believe my hair's gonna be like this forever now. Also, intern, what are you doing on my desk? Who's throwing the lemon? <laughs> Here you go guys, another classic challenge. So you're gonna be chilling on the couch, you're gonna get a water bottle, put it between your legs, and you have to somehow get all the water into your mouth without spilling a single drop! Aww. Is it possible? I don't know. Can we do it? Maybe. I believe in us. Let's try it, guys! Okay, so intern number one! We'll go ahead and put your water bottle. Open her up. Okay, okay. We got this, intern. Cool. Okay, okay. intern number one, can you handle this? I can, I can. Let's do it. Okay, you're up, go! You did not do oh, that. Wow. Good try. Maybe next time. It's in my nose. It's in my, it's in my face. <laughs> I don't think you got much water. Okay, intern. How much did you get in your mouth? I didn't get much in my mouth, but it's all up my nose. It's in your nose? Okay, oh, here. Uh, I'll just hold it up like this. Oh, oh my god. Whoa. That's a lot of water in your nose, intern. My God! Okay, so this much from intern number one. Oh, my head hurts so bad. Woo! Okay, up next, intern number two. All right, ready? Okay, intern number two. Uh, you got a lot going on this. Santa is in the lead by one point, and the intern had a lot of water in his nose. So Here you go. One, two, three, go! Oh! Oh, what's that? No, that's a There's no way I'm getting that in my head. <laughs> Sorry about that, man. I can't believe I accidentally got more oh, water. Got it! Sorry guys, I don't know what happened. Okay. okay, how much water did you get in your mouth? Oh no, and I guess I'm really bad at that challenge. <sighs> Looks like intern number one beat me in this round. Oh yeah, I beat you in your face, hair Jordan. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm up. so sad about that. Okay, you're up next, Santa. What if it turns to ice? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Santa, you're up. You got this, man. Oh yes. Okay, Santa, hold that tightly in between your legs. You got this. I didn't see any come out. Santa, we didn't even see anything come out. Was your bottle even open? Santa, how did you? What the heck? Y'all give him the oh, thing. Santa, come on, come on, come on, get it, spit Santa, it out. How much? Santa, spit it oh out. Oh my gosh, Santa, we don't want Santa to drown. Oh, oh gosh, oh, we're gonna need. Give me a bucket. Give me a bucket. Oh my god. Oh, no, 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 no bucket. Give me a bucket. The fucking guy. We got Santa with 57 gallons? That's impressive, Santa. But I can only give you a maximum score of five. So you get five points. Aw, oh, man. Next time I'm saving that trip for the New Year's Eve party. Okay, so intern number one, you got two ounces. So for that, I'm going to give you two points. Yay! Okay, intern number two, how many did you get, buddy? I got nothing. What? Well, intern number two, you might not have gotten any water, but you got me the bucket, and for that, I'm giving you the max score of five points! Oh, yeah! Woo! Oh, my God! Oh. Okay, and time for the last challenge. Dang it, dude. Your trash is giving you such a hard time. They're bothering you while you're driving, and you're like, I can't do this anymore. So you grab some markers, and you just stick it to your window. And boom, now they have the markers ready to draw all over your window in your car. I don't see how this could go wrong at all. Okay guys, so here are our markers. And I don't have any of those suction cups on me, so I'm just gonna use some of this double-sided tape. Flip this bad boy over, and it's all set to be put on our window. Wow guys, it's actually sticking! Now we can access our markers, just like this. Let's grab a blue. Yes. Now to find out whether you can actually write on your window or not. You ready? 
Oh, you can actually do it. And I'm gonna keep it in one spot. It's almost like I'm customizing my other adventure mobile. I can draw like, that's me in the back of my car. Just poking my head up through the window. Well guys, I guess I'm gonna have to say that this one works. So, okay guys, so we're all gonna lay on our backs and put our feet up just like this, like we're giving birth. And then we're gonna put a big old bucket of water right on top. And then as a team, we're all gonna slowly remove our shoes. Um, cause we don't need shoes anymore. Oh! Chris have colored hair. <laughs> okay, guys. So since we already have the bucket from the last challenge, we're just gonna use this. You ready? Everyone get in position. Mm -hmm. That water was in Santa's mouth. I'm not doing this. We'll start in three, two, one, go, go. Mm. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, oh my gosh, intern number one, you're so wet. <laughs> Why'd you kick it at me? Okay, intern number one. So since you took one for the team, I'm gonna have to give you four. <laughs> For real? You did it! I did it? Yeah, but I'm gonna have to take one of those points and give him my good buddy, Andrew number two! Woo! You yeah. get one point! Why do I get a point? You get a point because you don't let me push you around, and I respect that. Sounds good. Okay, now Santa, I'm gonna have to give you zero points because you did absolutely nothing. I'm sitting in water. <sighs> well, sorry, man. Okay, guys, and that means that everyone is tied. So, I guess there's only one more thing to do. Okay, guys, is your shirt just uh, too small for you? Well, here's a solution. You're gonna wanna take another shirt and button it to that shirt. And then you just take the arms, wrap it around yourself, and you got yourself a new shirt. I love it, a two-sided shirt to match my two-sided hair. Guys, I'm just so sick of my black and white striped shirt. So so instead of that, I'm gonna get a black and white fancy shirt. Here we go, just take them off the hangers. Whoa, whoa. Unbutton these bad boys. And apparently we're just supposed to button them together. I hope they haven't even, <gasps> the buttons are on the same side. Oh no! I guess one shirt's just gonna have to be inside out. That's fine. I need to do this on the table. Okay, so I guess I'll actually flip this one inside out. And now the buttons will hopefully line up. Okay, so it turns out they actually went together pretty well. Okay, now let's try this bad boy on. This is gonna be interesting. So I guess I put my arm through one of them and then put my arm through another one of them. Oh wait, I'm wearing it backwards. I'm supposed to wear it the other way. Like, stop. I don't know how I feel about this. Is it supposed to be open back like that? Where's my arm? Okay, I think I got it. So then I pull it around. Wow! Oh my gosh, it worked! It kind of looks like a straight jacket, but you know, if this is the look you're going for, I'm gonna have to say that this one absolutely works. <laughs> look at that, black and white, and then I got like black and white striped shirt under. This looks so ridiculous. Okay, let's check out the next one. Okay guys, so you're at the park and you got a freaking splinter. Oh! But what you're gonna wanna do is grab a syringe thing and just suck that thing right out. And boom, no more splinter. And I'm not talking about splinter from the Ninja Turtles. I'm talking about splinter as in piece of wood. Anyway, let's try this life hack. Okay guys, so I don't really wanna just stick a piece of wood in my hands cause uh, frankly, they've been through enough today. So instead, I'm gonna use some of this Canadian bacon and I'm just gonna pretend that this is human flesh. Then I'm gonna grab a toothpick and I'm just gonna really get splinters out of it. Just really rub it into our hand. Hopefully we get a nice and big one. There we go. That's a good size splinter. Just shove it right in there. Okay guys, so here's our splinter. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take our syringe and simply put it to our skin and try and suck out the splinter. The splinter fell through. Oh no. Okay, I'll try it again. Firmly around the splinter and... I mean, it took it out. Well guys, I guess I'm gonna have to say that this one actually kinda works. Okay, so for this one, we're gonna need some eggshells, crush those bad boys up, put them inside of a bag, get some flour, add some water, add some food coloring, <laughs> mix that bad boy up, just smush it all together. Just really smush it. Cut off the tip of your bag and use it almost like a, a, a cream filling dispenser and uh, wait an hour. And now you got yourself a giant hunk of chalk. Wow, this giant chalk works way better than that little chalk. Okay guys, so first things first, I'm gonna need to separate a few eggs. Boobity boop. Six should do it. Okay, I went ahead and rinse these off a little bit. It didn't say to do that, but I just took the liberty of doing it anyway. Now we're gonna put all the eggshells inside of a plastic bag and just squish it up. Ow! 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 Well, guys, I've tried everything. 
anything I could think of to really make this nice and powdery, but it doesn't seem to really want to be breaking down. I think this should be good enough though. We're gonna go ahead and add some all-purpose flour and a little bit of hot water. Oh my gosh, the bag's leaking. I'm just gonna try my hardest to really mix this. Okay, I'm gonna have to use this. Oh, I forgot the food dye. I'm gonna try and make some bright blue chalk. Oh, that might be way too much food dye. Just close that up really good and mix it up in the bag. Oh my god, that is turning blue so quick. Oh, I should've wore gloves. Oh, I'm gonna regret this, I already know it. Well, that's some very blue chalk mixture. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the tip. Grab a paper towel roll, and hopefully all of it should just kind of stay in the bottom and not leak out the sides. It feels like a thick enough mixture to where I think I should be okay. This smells very odd right now. Pushing that clay down a little bit. Now I'm gonna let this dry and sit overnight. I will see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully my hands are not permanently dyed blue. One eternity later. Okay guys, it's been about 24 hours. It still feels a little bit wet, but I'm gonna go ahead and try and tear this apart without breaking it. Okay, let's see how this turns out. Uh, okay, it's not holding up very well. This looks disgusting. It's definitely not hard. It said in the video to only do eight hours. I let it do 24. Okay, I guess it's time for me to use it as chalk now. Um, here we go. Oh, God. Uh, uh. It's just falling apart in my hands. Guys, I'm not really feeling this chalk. I'm gonna have to say that this one doesn't work. Man, and I just got a lot of the blue dye off my hands. Ugh. So this is how you can make your drawings into a fun shirt. So you take your drawings and then you put plastic wrap over it, cut them out, I guess, and then iron them on. It's that easy. And then you got yourself this awesome shirt. I wonder if this one will actually work. Okay guys, so here's our piece of printing paper. Now I'm gonna go ahead and and write out my design. I think I'm just gonna put the word craft, a classic on a classic shirt. And then for this one, I'm giving it an exclamation point. Craft, 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 craft. We're just really excited. We're just out here, we're crafting. The craftiest guy you'll ever meet. What's up guys? Professional life hack tester and crafter here. Robbie Epic Sauce. Okay, I'm gonna outline it in black. I ended up really going big with the exclamation point. Just to show how excited we are to craft. Now we cut this bad boy out. Hey guys, and this is how it turned out. The letters are kind of more curly than I anticipated them to be, but you know, I'm sure it'll be fine, okay? Now we're gonna grab our shirt. <gasps> no! Oh, I just blew all of them away. Oh my goodness. Okay, we got our shirt, and we are not going to blow them away this time. I'm a mess. We're gonna craft this, and we're gonna craft it good. According to this, they just use plastic wrap to put it on there. I don't know how exactly this is going to work. This feels like it's already going to be a complicated process, especially considering considering all these are already kind of rolled up. So essentially, I have to put a layer on the top and a layer on the bottom. So I'm gonna try my best to flatten these guys out. They really don't wanna flatten out though, if I'm being honest. Oh my goodness. Just flatten out for me. What the craft? I'm going to carefully put the second layer of saran wrap on. Hopefully this will help flatten it out a little bit. It just said plastic wrap. And I don't know if it's supposed to be like actual, like laminating plastic, or if it's just supposed to be like regular old plastic wrap. They made it very unclear, but I think I'm making it work. And now I'm gonna cut off some of the excess here. There we go. Center it in the middle of our shirt. Then we grab some parchment paper, put that over it. And then we grab a hot iron and just iron it down. And just melt all the plastic, melt all your cares away while you're ironing and making this DIY craft shirt. It's truly relaxing. It just melts the plastic and melts your cares away. I already made that joke. Anyway, I think this might actually work. I'm getting a weird suspicion of it. It does kind of concern me that I'm using paper for this, but you know, it's a craft. Let's see how it's turning out. Oh, wow. Oh, that's kind of cool. I wonder if I melt it even more, like the edges will just disappear. Okay, let's see how it turned out. Oh, wow. You can definitely see some of the plastic wrap on there, but for the most part, Oh, wow. It kind of feels like a normal shirt. I should probably let it cool down a little bit and solidify, but overall, this is looking pretty good. Well, we might as well try it on. Not gonna lie, I am really excited for this t-shirt. One, two, and... 
Oh, wow, I look so great in my brand new craft t-shirt. Unfortunately, it feels like part of it, oh my gosh, it already started falling off. That is very unfortunate. But you know what, it looks great. You're only gonna wear it for a day or two. Highly recommend this. It doesn't damage your clothes from what I can tell. So if you want to temporarily decorate your shirt, I'm gonna have to say that this one works, but if you want a more permanent solution, I would say go with something else because it doesn't work in that case. So you go to serve dinner, it's some fresh, delicious broccoli, and your person's like, ugh. Oh. That's gross. What can you do? What do you do? You go and you grab the sprinkles and you just <laughs> put the sprinkles all over the broccoli. Why, why, why? <laughs> why? why are you like this? Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, that'll do it. Oh. Okay guys, so we have ourselves a bowl of freshly cooked frozen broccoli. Mmm, delicious. So I couldn't find any sprinkles, but I found this Funfetti frosting from a long time ago. It's actually about a year expired, so I'm just gonna take the sprinkles from the top of it and uh, just put it right on there. Actually, do sprinkles have an expiration date? According to African Beacon Journal, A. Colored sugar, sprinkles, and other similar cookie decorations have an indefinite shelf life as they are made of pure sugar for the most part. We're good! So I'm just gonna take a little piece and just dip it into our sprinkles. Ooh, look at that delicious little morsel. But how does it taste? This. I feel very redundant eating this. You take something super healthy like broccoli and now you're just covering it in copious amounts of sugar. Like, it tastes okay, I guess, but this isn't how I would choose to eat broccoli. I'm definitely gonna say that I don't think it really adds that much to it. But I mean, technically, yeah, you can add sprinkles to broccoli and it tastes better, I guess? I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna grab ourselves a pop it, put some cocoa, cocoa, cocoa puffs in there, then add a little bit of ice cream. Oh, just make sure it overflows everywhere. And then we're gonna shove that bad boy back in the freezer, and then let it freeze. Dump it all out. Oh, wow. Then we cover it in a little bit of chocolate. Mm. Delicious. Okay, guys, so here is our pop it, and the first step is to fill it with some cereal. Just one little cereal for each will do fun. Oh, I could do a rainbow at the bottom. Oh, that would be fun. I'm gonna do that. Okay, there we go. This looks pretty cute, actually. I like that. So now we're just gonna put our cereal off to the side and get some ice cream. It looks like they kind of put theirs into a bag and then sort of smushed it out, almost like an icing dispenser. There we go, now I'm gonna smush this bad boy. Oh no! I ruined my pop -it. I should have done this afterward. Okay, this looks a lot softer. So now, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the little tip off. Boop -boop. Now we simply squeeze it onto our poppet. Oh, wow. That's so smooth. Honestly, this ice cream looks so delicious now. Like, why don't I do this to my ice cream before I normally eat it? <gasps> I could do a little saucer of ice cream cone. Oh my gosh, I'm doing that after this. Just buy store-made ice cream and squish it. That's how that works, right? Okay, now spread it around. I think I put way too much ice cream on, but that's okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pop this bad boy in the freezer for a little bit, and we'll see how it turns out. Six and a half hours. Later. Okay, it's been a few hours, and it looks like it smoothed out a little bit. That's kind of cool. Now let's see if we can get it out of this thing. Here we go. I'm just gonna pop some of them out. Come on, you can do it. Pop it. It doesn't seem to be wanting to come out. Okay, so this is definitely not working. It looks delicious, but I'm gonna have to say that this one doesn't work. Dang, that's really unfortunate. I'm gonna go grab a spoon. Honestly, this is pretty good. The cereal is a little bit soggy, but you know, it doesn't taste bad. Well, on to the next one. So here's how to have unlimited fun. Uh, all you gotta do is freeze some water inside of a little Tupperware thing. And then just go hand with some watercolor. Look at all the pretty colors, and as it melts away, you can just keep applying the paint, and it'll just keep melting the colors away, and you keep keep drawing on it forever. So first things first, we need to make some ice. Boop -boop -boop. I'll be right back with some ice. Three days later. Okay guys, and here's our ice. I'm sorry if you guys can't see it. I put it on a white background. That way we can experience all the colors. I'm gonna bring in my little easel guy. Now I'm gonna use food coloring. I'm only using food coloring because I don't have any watercolors. I was ill prepared for this craft and I thoroughly apologize guys. But let's start off with maybe some blue. Yeah, let's try some blue. 
Oh wow. Look at that. I can paint on the ice and it'll just melt away. I can just paint whatever I want. Will the water make it just <gasps> What? Look at that. The water makes the ice change back to normal. How amazing. Let's try a little bit of red. Ooh, look at all the colors. I don't really see the total point of this. I guess it's kind of fun. I'm gonna take a little napkin and clear our canvas. Oh wow, look at that. Nice and clean canvas. Grab a little bit of yellow. Oh, that did not stay yellow. I should have cleaned off my brush a little better. Back to red. A little bit of green. Oh, that just turned into brown. Well guys, I guess I'm gonna have to say that this one uh, actually kind of works. I mean, it's a fun little way to make some colorful art and really experience the colors of ice. Anyway, yeah, this one works. Okay, guys, so you're out taking photos and it's just so sunny. You can't get your person to look into the camera and you're just getting aggravated with them and they're getting aggravated with you and you're like, oh, just freaking do it. And they're like, okay, what you're gonna wanna do is grab yourself a piece of paper and start making star-shaped holes in them. This is sure to truly compromise and now you have a very artistic uh, shadows on their face and they're not looking directly into the sun. Okay guys, so here's our piece of paper. I don't have a stamp, so I'm just gonna go ahead and draw some stars myself. Okay, now I just have to cut all these bad boys out. Just gonna go ahead and grab my X-Acto knife. A boobity boo. And now I'm going to carefully cut out all the stars. There we go, one down, a bunch more to go. Okay guys, it's all done. Now let's try this bad boy out. Okay guys, so I'm gonna be giving this photo a nice and suburban feel. This brick wall in the background. I guess I just have to hold this up above my face. Well, let's try it without it first. Oh gosh, I can't see. Uh, that's better. How'd those turn out? I feel like those didn't turn out very well. Now let's try it with this bad boy. Let me take a look at some of these photos really quick. I'm gonna look at some of the ones without the shade. Oh uh, yeah, that's not good. My eyes are closed in that one. Now let's check out some of the ones with the shade. Oh wow, that is artistic as heck. Oh, that's beautiful. Like something out of a movie. Well guys, I guess I'm gonna have to say that this one actually works. So here's how to make a fun charm, a lucky charm, if you will. So you just grab some plastic and just start drawing your design on it. You can even have a design in back of it to help you. And then you color it in, throw it in the oven, and boom, you have yourself a fun little lucky charm. Okay guys, so here's our piece of plastic. This is actually a little bin from a spring mix that I bought for my turtle Koopa. I'm just gonna cut some of this out, save this for later. And for the sake of making this a little easier to see, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on a white background. And now we're gonna make our rainbow. There we go, that looks pretty good. Now we just have to draw on our colors. Boop, 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 boop. Then we gotta fill in the white of the clouds. And just to top it off, I'm gonna redo the outline. Okay, and it's all finished. Carefully take this off. Then we're gonna cut it out into the cloud rainbow shape. Okay, now before we put this in the oven, we have to go and poke a little hole. And there we go, the tiniest of holes. Get some parchment paper, put it on a tray, and into the oven it goes. So if I happen to craft didn't tell me what temperature to bake it in or how long to put it in. So I used my good friend Google. And Google said to put it in at 325 for about one minute. So in theory, it should almost be done. Oh, it tacoed into itself. I don't think it was supposed to do that. It says that it'll correct itself, but I don't trust it. I'll just leave it alone. Okay guys, I'll show you the results in about one minute, okay? But before we see the final results, guys, I need you guys to hit that like button. One like equals one potato life saved, so make sure to uh, click that like button and we'll save all the potatoes in the world. Let's see how it looks. And it looks like it is in fact Still tacoing. I'm gonna try and pull it out. Maybe I can fix it. Can I fix this? Oh, oh, I don't know if I can fix this. I'll go ahead and leave it in for a little bit longer. Okay, and here are the final results, guys. It definitely did not work as well as I would have planned. I actually left it in for about five minutes and it never flattened out. It just kinda tacoed like this. I tried to straighten it out and it just kinda kept curving. So, I'm gonna have to say that this one doesn't work. Well, on to the next one. Hey guys, remember that plastic charm that we made a few minutes ago that I absolutely loved? Well, today you can make one with a little handprint too. All you gotta do is get some acrylic paint, put it right on there, put a, put a little hole, and shove this bad boy in the oven too. And now you have a perfect little hand of a charm. You know what? I thought this one was cute, so I'm gonna try it with Bench. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. Uh, fun fact, I actually record these before I do the actual crafts. And since we know that this one doesn't work, I'm actually gonna skip this Which one. Which is kind of a bummer, because I was really looking forward Making to- Making a little paw print charm with my dog, Bench. It's okay, he's really tired right now. I don't think he'd want to be in a video anyway. <laughs> Okay guys, so here is my luggage. And now we gotta find ourselves some pillows. Oh yes. 
I'm ready to start my nest. And then we're gonna add a Batman blanket and just put this bad boy right over it. Oh yes. I'll go anywhere, use anywhere, I'll sleep anywhere. Oh, this is so comfortable. And it has a handle for me to hold on to while I sleep. That's honestly my favorite feature. You ever just wake up and you just have nothing to grab? You're just like, ah! Just for those dreams when you're really falling off a cliff, you know? But anyway guys, I'm gonna have to say that this one absolutely works. You can have a functional, stylish bed anywhere you go. I mean, you'll have to carry two suitcases, but that's besides the point, you have a comfy bed, and I'm gonna have to say that this one works. Okay, so you're in the car, and you're like, oh man, my kid really has to pee. All you're gonna wanna do is grab a bucket and just put it in the back of your car. Oh my goodness, now you have a place to use the bathroom? But won't your car smell like... I don't know how good of an idea this is, but uh, you know what? I guess I'm gonna do it for the sake of the craft. <laughs> okay guys, so instead of defecating in my car, I think we're actually going to- Where's the thumbnail? Yeah! And that means I'm gonna need a bucket and the green screen. Just go on my bucket, grab my toilet paper. Okay, here we go. Yeah, that ought to do it. Okay guys, we're gonna be doing one of my favorite activities, tie dye. Okay guys, we're gonna be tie dyeing some socks today. So the first step to this is get a white sock, scrunch it up just like this, put some rubber bands over it, and then just put that dye all over it. It's all of your socks until you have tie dye. Boom, you got yourself some tie dye socks. This is great, I love this, and I love tie dye socks, so I can't wait to try this. Okay guys, so for this one, I'm gonna need some gloves, some writ dye, and some fresh white socks. Make sure they're cotton. Cotton dyes really well compared to like polyester. I learned that the hard way. Now we're gonna put all this off to the side and then I'm gonna grab a Tupperware container to catch all the excess dye and then a grate of some sort to put over it. Then we're gonna grab our socks, and then I'm actually going to roll my socks. Uh, they kind of bunch there, but I thought it would be really fun if I kind of folded mine in half like this, and then I'm gonna go ahead and roll it from the outside in. Grab a rubber band and just uh, rubber band this bad boy together. And for this one, I'll do it kind of like the opposite way and just roll it straight on. Move it a bit. Another rubber band, and there we go. We have two perfectly rolled socks. Then we're gonna put on our gloves and just uh, go ham with some Rit dye. For the sake of this, I'm gonna put some in a squeeze bottle just to really help me uh, a little bit. Because the Rit Dye doesn't really come with any sort of dispenser. So we're just putting it in a little squeeze bottle. Okay, there we go. Three squeeze bottles full of Rit Dye. I will go ahead and start off with the darkest color on this one. Like I said, this is all experimental. I've never tie dyed socks before. I can tell this is gonna be fun though. Already, this uh, blue is extremely dark. Just to make it a little easier to see the socks and everything, I'm gonna put some white paper at the bottom. I don't know how much this is gonna help, but I just want the socks to be visible. Oh, that definitely helps a little bit. And then I'm gonna go in with some of the pink and then shove it right in there with the dye. All experimental here, guys. And last but not least, fill it in with some of this yellow. Looking pretty good. Now for the next one, I think I'm gonna do mostly blue. Again, this looks very much like a black. This is supposed to be like a navy blue, apparently. A little bit more pink. Let's really get that pink in there. This almost looks like a maroon red. Red dye, what do you do? I'm pretty sure this will turn out a little different once I rinse it. Ever so slightly, the tiniest bit of yellow, and just like the little white spots, really fill it in. Okay, looks pretty good. And while I'm at it, I might as well do the rest of the socks really quick. So for these, I'm gonna try uh, some different techniques. Like for some of them, I will try the wrinkle technique that 5 Minute Crafts suggested. And then other times, I'm just gonna kinda do whatever the heck I'm feeling like doing at that exact moment. Right here, I'm kinda just twisting it, and then I'm gonna turn it into a knot. Perfect little knot. Just do a few of those. These ones, maybe like fold them in half and then roll it up. I'm really just making all this up as I go along, guys. But that's part of the fun. This one, I'm just kind of folding a few times. Now let's get back to the fun part and start dyeing these bad boys. And I have a pretty wide variety of dyes that I can use, so uh, I'm just gonna really mix it up with this one. Boop, boop, we got some reds. Got some blue. Last but not least, the yellow. Okay guys, and there we have it. You can't even see all the socks now because they're so dark. Now I'm gonna let the dye sort of sit for a few hours and then I'm gonna rinse it out. A few moments later. Okay guys, now I'm gonna go ahead and rinse these out. The trick with this is you wanna use cold water, that way it doesn't run through and kinda mix all your colors together. How are we looking on this one? Oh wow, that's turning out pretty cool. I like the purple. Yeah, we're getting some nice green in there. I didn't originally add green, but that's what happens when you add yellow and blue 
together. I probably ended up using way more dye than I needed to, but I just wanted to be safe because socks, they just come in contact with constantly moving feet. Just your feet are constantly rubbing against these things, and you know, that just really takes dye out fast. And this is how our little sushi roll one turned out. Oh wow, that blue looks so nice. Yeah, I definitely used uh, a little too much dye on this. I could have probably gotten away with watering it down, but I still think they turned out really good. I should actually keep these up here, that way they don't just kind of morph all together. I'm pretty good. Here's a bunched up one that 5 Minute Crafts recommended. This one might turn out better than all of them. Or maybe not. I don't like these large patches. I definitely used a lot of purple on this. <laughs> I think it's because I used a lot of red and I used a lot of blue. And they just kind of mixed together. Which, I mean, the purple doesn't look bad. I'm not upset with the purple. Now for our mostly yellow ones. These I just kind of rolled up. Okay, so one side's gonna be a lot brighter than the other. Which is fine. Oh, and here's our knot. The knot turned out the best. I am really happy with this one. This looks like a really cool tie-dye. Lesson learned for next time, I'm definitely watering down my dyes a little bit. Maybe getting the actual socks wet. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish these off, throw them in the dryer, and I'll show you how they turned out. Okay guys, are you ready to see how these socks turned out? So I'm gonna start off with um, the way that uh, 5 Minute Crafts told me to do it. Uh, here you go. Oh yes, they look um, very good. A little bit darker than I wanted them to, um, you know. We got a little spots of yellow, but it all kind of just blended together. Nice. Uh, let's go on to uh, my method. So here is uh, my method. Folding it, it looks completely different than the other way, so that's how that turned out. And uh, this is the spiral method, you know, way different than the other two. As you can see, all the socks. I'm just so happy with uh, the variety in color. Every one of these turned out so unique. Ugh, I messed up. I think I used way too much dye. I don't know where I went wrong. I think I was supposed to maybe mix the dye with water, but all the socks turned out exactly the same, as you can see. Maybe tie-dyeing socks is not the way to go. Can you dye socks? Yes. Could you probably do it a better way? Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'll say that this one works. I really need to learn how to tie-dye things better. You mind your own business and you look at your uh, cap and you're like, oh no. It turns out you put your pen inside your shirt the whole time. Now you have a crazy stain there. You should have wore a pocket protector, TBH. But what you're gonna wanna do is get some masking tape, lay it out on your shirt, and just paint your shirt blue. <laughs> Duh. Peel away the masking tape, get yourself a fine ruler like this, paint on the edge, try to write down your shirt, and uh, now you have a paper shirt with a little ink blot. Never, who's gonna know? Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. I guess we have to try this one to find out if it actually works. Okay. Hey guys, so here's our plain white tee. Not to be confused with the band, plain white tees. Great band, I love your music. If you guys are watching this, senpai notice me. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and grab some tape, and then we're gonna make our lines straight across. Now we're gonna get a bit of blue paint, and just fill in the lines. Just gonna be really careful to just dab it on there. Now that it's dry, we're gonna take all the tape off. So satisfying. Okay, now we got some pretty neat lines. I messed up only a couple places, but that's fine. Now I'm gonna get some red paint and put it on this ruler. Just carefully dab it on there, just like this. Okay, now we're gonna carefully add the red line. And we slide. Oh, I feel like my table's not even. It didn't get any of the red on there. I almost feel like I should have just drew the red line myself because I feel like that would have been a lot more even, but that's okay. I'm definitely not really a fan of that method, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it all in with a paintbrush. Ugh, the line's so thick down here. This is looking pretty good. Let's try it on. Boobity boo. Oh man, I feel like college ruled paper. Could you guys see this being sold at Hot Topic? Dude, this is great. This is sick. Remember they were doing like the cup shirts? So you guys know what I'm talking about. You've seen this design, right? But yeah, I mean, it feels topical for school. You could always like write notes on it. This could be fun. Have your friends write all sorts of fun messages on you. You can even do it on the back and do the same thing. Well guys, I guess I'm gonna have to say that this actually works. I'd say it's actually a pretty cool idea.